And let's shift focus on to COVID-19 and the situation across the globe. We are actually seeing a spike in the COVID-19 cases. And back home, we also have the government that's preparing in case there is a likely event of a third wave of COVID-19. But let's take uh, stock uh, with, uh, with uh, Manindra Agarwal, who is a professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, and also deputy director at IIT Kanpur, to take stock of the situation, of what are his uh, readings on the COVID-19 situation in the country. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you for joining us on ET Now. Uh, I'm Cheryl. Along with me is my colleague Pankaj. Let's talk about the COVID-19 cases. We are we're seeing a sharp rise in the cases across the globe. But uh, talking about India, do you think India will be able to avert the third wave of the pandemic? Well, we must understand the reasons for the resurgence that one is seeing across the globe. And when one looks at it closely, it is because of the Delta variant that has now gone over to many other countries. Now, this variant is well known to be far more infectious than the earlier variants. And that is why you see in so many countries a sharp rise in number of cases. Now, with us, fortunately, the situation is that Delta variant has come and almost gone now and there is a good amount of immunity that exists in our population. So uh, as long as Delta variant remains the dominant one, I do not see much uh, hope, uh, much uh, concern for future that uh, there will be a sharp rise. How severe do you think the third wave would be looking at, looking at the current situation? Uh, what is the best and the worst case scenario? Yeah, so we just, since we do not know really what will happen in future, so one can make certain assumptions and then project what will happen under those assumptions. So assuming that the Delta variant remains the dominant one in our country, the best case scenario is that the number of cases will slowly keep on decreasing over the next few months and we'll reach an endemic stage. Uh, the worst case scenario, uh, if one may call it, is that there is a new mutant which uh, is more infectious as well as uh, has a lot more immunity escape property, which means that the people who are currently immune may still get infected by the new variant. And if that happens, then of course, the cases will rise uh, sharply. Now, how sharply that depends on how much more infectious this new variant is and how much immune escape property does it have. So we have done some simulations. We, uh, we assume that uh, there is no immune escape property uh, than what it already is with Delta variant. But uh, the new mutant comes, which is about 50% uh, more infectious than the Delta variant. Then the, our simulations show that the cases will rise and by October end, it, they will peak. Uh, it, but that will be a much smaller peak than the second wave closer to the first wave. But can we actually say that worst is behind us when it comes to COVID-19 and uh, if uh, there is any third wave, it won't be as serious, as severe, as devastating as the second wave of COVID-19? Uh, well, not uh, really. I mean, if you just look at the seropositivity data from the ICMR Zero survey conducted recently, the reason becomes very clear. Kerala is a state with the lowest seropositivity value. Uh, at the moment, uh, our estimate uh, is that they only have about 50% of their population immune through uh, through uh, either infection or vaccination. So they, they still have some way to go. So the one expects that Kerala will continue to report uh, uh, large number of cases uh, for the next uh, month or two. Uh, Maharashtra has a somewhat higher seropositivity, but still not as much as uh, many other states. So they will also continue to report a reduced number of cases, but still more than the other states. So that, that continues until they have enough immunity in their population. And then only then the cases will drop uh, 
for states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, uh, the Madhya Pradesh, they have a fairly high immunity level at the moment. So that's why you see very few cases. How is the model factoring uh, the test, the possibility of new variant emerging at the pace of vaccination? So for vaccination, we are tracking uh, the Coven portal provides uh, very uh, up-to-date information. So we have uh, you know, daily uh, time series of when vaccinations being given. So that we have incorporated in the model. And for future, because we have to project the future when we are analyzing third wave, uh, we assume uh, uh, the somewhat conservative numbers of vaccines available. Uh, the government estimates show that the availability of vaccine will continuously increase. Uh, I believe August should have somewhere around 15 to 16 crore vaccination, vaccine shots. So we are assuming they'll increase up to 20 crores and they'll stabilize. And under that uh, projection, we are doing our future simulations. Now, as regard to the testing and uh, uh, which connects to the what number or what with what factor are you missing cases? Well, it varies from state to state. But one thing we have observed is that uh, in most of the states that factor more or less remains the same over time. So uh, different states have different factors. Again, that is also comes out clearly in the same survey. But uh, that factor doesn't change dramatically. So which suggests that the testing strategies adopted by states are more or less consistent. Mr. Agarwal, let's talk uh, more in depth about Kerala as well as Maharashtra. The caseload continues to be very high. They have high number of active cases. By when can we see actually the number of cases stabilize around in these both, both of these states? There are two different types of uh, projections than one that one can do. First type is when you assume that situations as they exist today continue to exist in future. And that's the plot uh, that I projected, uh, uh, shared in the Twitter, that cases continue to decline. And the, the situation that we assume uh, today, the Delta variant is a dominant, and it continues to stay dominant. And then, as I earlier said, then the plot will continue to slowly decay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the other possibility is that a new mutant comes. When it will come, whether it will come, we don't know. But we just, to, to see what will happen if such a mutant comes, is this alternate analysis. That I haven't tweeted yet. I intend to do it maybe in a day or two. So, you know, when we just look at the numbers and, you know, how things are moving in, would, could you just tell us, you know, which states would you see major concern of COVID situation and uh, how could uh, you emerge and find out where are the hotspots? See, the states which have low seropositivity, they are the ones most vulnerable. Uh, Kerala is uh, one that I already mentioned, but there are some states in Northeast which I believe Although uh, the uh, zero survey there, I don't think has been done comprehensively, but from little bit that has been done, it suggests that their zero positivity is quite low. And that means that uh, they will face a significant rise if uh, you know they, uh, the mutant or new variant starts spreading there. So that is something that uh, they have to keep an eye out for and uh, increase the pace of vaccination. Yeah. All right, Mr. Agarwal, we leave it at there. Thank you for joining us on the show.